Good morning. Before we get into this morning's update, I'd like to go over a quick synopsis of what we will touch base on this morning. As we can see, XRP is broken back above the psychological support or psychological level at 50 cents. We're up 1.77% on the day, and we need to look today, and we'll go deep into the analysis, not just on the charts. We'll take a look at the short versus long liquidations. We'll take a look at the futures contracts on XRP, whether the shorts versus long, so we can see a direction. We're going to take a look at Bitcoin's liquidation zone. We know we have one at 64,500 of 1.2 billion, but we're going to take a look over the top in case we get a bullish tug here with the U.S. presidential election tomorrow, and we'll see the zones that we could technically come up to, even if it's just for liquidation, but Bitcoin... As we've preached the last several weeks, as long as it stays over that megaphone consolidation on the cup and handle, Bitcoin has higher thresholds. It's just, was it going to come down to 64500 first? Right now, the fact we pulled up, we ended the candle over the weekend over that megaphone line on the handle formation, it could lead to an upward momentous bounce here. But we're going to do our due diligence here over this next 20 minutes. We're going to look at the heat maps for Bitcoin. And we're going to look at a lot of information in regards to what's going on in the cryptocurrency world. And what could actually play out leading into the presidential election, which is tomorrow. So we're going to have extreme volatility in the next 24 to 48 hours. And we're going to have to be very prepared. If you are watching right now, I encourage you to stay tuned because not only are we going to go through the funding rates and see what we're doing with XRP as far as open interest liquidation, long short ratios, and yada, yada, yada. We're going to look through the liquidation heat map on Bitcoin. We're also going to take a look today over the top in case we have a rally over the top. Because we do have some liquidations in the shorter time frames. We can see up over the top. Uh, we'll go over this in a very deep way. We'll go over the crypto fear and greed index as well. But I do want to timestamp this before I get going any further. So please make sure to hit that like button so YouTube will recommend this update. It makes it so, so, it's so very important because even if someone's not following my channel, my content will pop up on the newsfeed. If you hit that like button, it'll be recommended by YouTube. You guys have been doing a fantastic job the last couple days hitting the like button. Yesterday's video had over 1,700 views, almost 270 likes as well. So it was fantastic. So just keep doing what you're doing. You're helping me get the word out. But we have to maintain vigilance here. Because with the election coming up tomorrow, we're going to have some uncertain or even certain volatility. But it would be nice to know exactly where we're going to go from here. So please make sure to hit that like button as I get into the intro. And we're going to hit this hardcore. Good morning. 7.12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on this Monday, November 4th, 2024. I'm XRP Future Millionaire. And I reside in the great state of Michigan. So let's start here. XRP is up just over 1%. I think it's, what is it right now? 1.69%. And we're really in an interesting spot here for XRP. Because we have this bear flag that's playing out. And if it plays out true, it, it, it would bring us down to around that 42 cent level if it plays out true to the downside. However, we have not broken down. And I was targeting that 47.71%. If it broke down and uh, retested the downtrending support. However, because that was the resistance going all the way back to 2018. And it's been a level of support here for about the last month and a half. Going on two months now. Now, with that technical drop, how we came out. We knew it was going to be a wild weekend. It came down to just about 49 cents. And it managed to hold itself. Now we're back testing this formation. If it fails to hold this and materialize out, that's how you still get that tug down under 48 cents. Now, if it gets back over it, is where you can draw an interesting conclusion here. Because yes, it's set up as a massive bear flag, and this is the one way to avoid a much bigger drop. And we've talked about this. It just, we came around. Now with this, we could technically swing out and that could play off as one of these w reversals we had a little consolidation and then we could have a massive push out and the only way we're really going to do this out of crypto is if bitcoin maintains this level here and does not give way at sixty-seven thousand. what is this in current times we're trying to measure it in current times Sixty-seven thousand seven thirty-five. so a little bit of room got about four hundred dollars here 
but you'd be looking at holding this. We already hit the resistance, the first resistance at 73,697, which tapped all time highs. Now we're back testing the megaphone consolidation on the cup and handle. Now, if we can successfully back test this like it is right now and then bounce out, this is extremely bullish. As we've said, unless Bitcoin breaks down, and even if it came to 64,500, we were looking at that liquidity spike. So if it came to that liquidity zone and just spiked down or dropped down just so that it could fill that 1.2 billion in leverage liquidity, liquidity, that was fine. Now, a way to avoid that is to hold right where we're at and play off of this as a W reversal, which we can see a W, small bull flag. Man, is this going to be interesting. Because it's either it bounces out of here and starts pushing back up towards 73,000, or we're going to have a quick fall down. It's going to be very interesting with the election. It seems to me like we could get some positive momentum, but the moment it breaks this wall, that's when we'd have to be very concerned. But right now, if that W reversal plays out, I'm not willing to say Bitcoin's just going to die yet. Just like I said the last few days, it could get ugly, and it started to get ugly. But unless Bitcoin breaks below that, yesterday was 68, today it's 67.7. It's still very bullish because we're breaking out right now on Bitcoin. This is coming back to support right now instead of hitting it at resistance. So we have to give our due diligence before we just 100% see it fall out. Now, could this be a big psyops this morning, knowing that we have a dot cross and bear flags and yada, yada, yada? It could be. But at the same time, that could be the that could have been the drop this week. And yes, I was targeting 47.7 cents. I wish it would have come down there at least to tap that area. Just because it didn't doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Um, we very well could push out. We could start pushing back up towards 56. We're back testing the broken pattern right here. Um, so don't get too excited until we get back over the top of this. But right now we've got a real shot here of switching the momentum. But at the same time, we've got a lot of work to do still if we want to flip this from being a bearish to bullish um, tug up here. As far as the short-term metrics with the dot cross and the daily and the big bear flag that we have to invalidate. But there are chances. There are chances to do it. It's just it's going to be very, very difficult unless we can get some volume. And right now, this morning, at least in the four hourly, the last four hours, the volume's increasing a little bit. Nothing major, but it is increasing, which is a good sign, especially if we want to see a push out here. Because if it breaks this support here, I'm just going to be honest. If it breaks this 48.5, because that's where we came on the swing low on this drop, that's where you could see it start coming unglued. Over the weekend, we didn't quite come all the way down there. We held at 49 cents roughly. And now we're starting to make a little bit of noise. But if it breaks that support structure, that's where it can be a problem. The only reason I'm still optimistic here is because it's on the top side of this 2018 resistance. And it's still being used as support. Would I have liked to see it come down? Yes. I would have liked to have seen the whole market at least come down to 47.7 just so we could get that out of the way and have that incredible bounce. But we did come down here to about 48.4 when we bounced down last time. Now we're back testing the broken formation. If we could get hot here and break back over, that would be something. But right now it's nothing but a back test on the drop point. We have to make sure that that's all it is. We have to make sure that it's not just the back test and then the rejection that drives you down. You want to make sure this is going to push over. And I'm going to show you everything so that if it does, you'll have the information in front of you before it even happens. We know the levels. We know what we're targeting. I want to talk about this real quick as well. Gigantic XRP whale birth with 104 million XRP shift. So this is something as well. According to on-chain data, a massive 104 million XRP transaction has birthed the new XRP whale, which refers to large holders of a specific cryptocurrency. The said whale surfaced after a recent transaction saw 104 million XRP Valued at approximately 56 million transferred in a single move. The transaction reported by blockchain tracking tool Whale Alert involved the transfer of 104,035,551 XRP from an unknown wallet to a new crea newly created wallet. Well, that didn't really, that, that's kind of speculation because the this isn't a new, this didn't birth a new XRP. Birthing a new XRP whale would assume somebody like you and I took our cash from the sidelines and made a massive purchase. If they're just transferring from an unknown wallet to a newly created wallet, that's not a new whale. They're just changing it. That would be like me changing it from Zoom to another wallet that I previously didn't own, but it's my same share. 
So I don't know how that birthed the new whale, but let's see. Whale Alert reported 104,948,961 XRP worth $52,305,486 transferred from unknown wallet to unknown new wallet. The identities of both the sending and receiving wallets remain unknown. Adding intrigue to the transaction, the whale's entry into the market comes at a pivotal time for Ripple. This isn't an entry into the market, though. I, this is terrible reporting. I'm sorry, but I'm here to tell you the truth. They're sending from an unknown wallet to an unknown wallet. They didn't birth anything into the market. They already had these tokens. These tokens were already stored away in a wallet, another cold wallet, and it was sent to a new cold wallet. That's not birthing new... Uh, the, anyhow, let's continue reading. The identities of both the sending and receiving wallets remain unknown. Adding entry to the transaction, the whale's entry into the market comes at a pivotal time for Ripple and the broader XRP ecosystem. Ripple recently released its Q3 2024 XRP market report, which highlighted growth for the XRP ecosystem and the crypto market beyond. I don't know. This just doesn't sit right with me, this reporting. It's not new money coming in, though. That's not. That's just a... In the most recent update to the XRP ledger, the XRP out Oracle pricing amendment has gone live, allowing XRP ledger's native oracles to be able to provide real-time data for key D5 features like the AMM and lending protocols. This update marks a major leap forward for institutional-grade DeFi. XRP has traded in the broad range of 48.7 to 56.6 since the beginning of October, indicating consolidation. At the time of writing, XRP was trading... Well, now it's up at 51.1 cents approximately. Um, it had two days of declines. Amid a, slightly a slight recovery, XRP remains below 53 cents, but the good news is the bears have failed to pull the price down to the 46 cent support. This shows that the selling slows at lower levels. Buyers will try again to push the price above the moving averages. The bull's first sign of strength would be a breakout and close above the 50 and 200 day moving averages which are 53.6 and 55 cents, respectively. This implies the start of a rally to the overhead barrier of 64 cents, which may pose a significant challenge to the bulls. On the downside, support is envi envisioned. What? It's, a, 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 it's down at 48.7 cents is the support, and 49.1 steeper declines might aim for early August low of 43.2 cents. So, 100 million... 104 million gigantic XRP whale birth, but that's not telling the truth. That is a, honestly, that's a less than seller way that they did that because it was just funds being moved from one cold wallet to another. If I send XRP from my cold wallet to another cold wallet, did I now create new XRP? No, I did not. I was not birthed as a new XRP holder. I simply switched from one wallet to another. That is not buying new XRP. Therefore, I am underwhelmed. By the way, that they did that article, it seems like something for views, and I'm going to point it out so everybody knows. So, right now, I want to look at the liquidations for bit, for XRP. It's slightly switched here a little bit. So, the liquidations in the last 24 hours, we had 2.8 million in the last 24 hours. Um, 2.4 million came from long liquidations. 404,000 came from short liquidations. So a little more on the shorts there as the price started going up. Um, open interest right now, we've got 526.4 million open interest the last 24 hours. That's down 1.56% in perpetual futures or perpetual. And then the futures are down 0.97%. Open interest share, 1.18% um, is total, but 1.25% and 0.09% from perpetual to futures. If we look at the exchanges, so I'm trying to see how much interest there are on the exchanges as well. What is going on here? Now, well, let me come out of here. All right, we'll do that, and then we'll just go back. It's always interesting how it does that. So right now, Bybit has 251.9 million in volume, 206 million on Bi or, uh, Bybit was 251, 206 is Binance, 48.5 million is OKX, 7.3 million Bitmax. Kraken 4.5, Bitfinex 3.7, Huobi 3.6, and Wuox 707,000 in volume. And then the long to short ratio, which I think is very important. Right now we have 71.1% going long, 28.8% going short, 2.47 to 1, all the way from the 5, 30, 1 hour, and 4 hourly. And the daily is a 2.6 to 1 going long, 72.24% to 27.76% going short. 
So it's definitely something to pay attention to here going forward. And then the liquidation heat map. If we look at it in the shorter time frame, heck, we can even take it into the, like the weekly. Give us a little more history. But if we look above us, if we were to go up, we do have some liquidations up here. A couple hundred million up at 72,500. We've got about 250 million. That's a little bit higher. About 280 million at 70,500. The highest liquidation zone is about 400 million. You got a couple of them right here. 488 at about 73,750. And then obviously if we go underneath, if we now let's go into the monthly so it's easier to see a little bit lower. We've got some severe liquidations down below. So I want to see the way this market rallies today because we're kind of in a, a weird spot here. Because we've got all this liquidation down here. 64,550. There's like 1.18 billion right there. So do I think we're just going to avoid that liquidation zone? Probably not. But we know over the top we've got a few different sections. If that bull flag plays out, it should bring us to the liquidity zone that we talked about just now above. But it's going to be very dicey here. It's going to be very tricky whether we come up to that zone first. Because of the election, I could see us coming up here. We can see a strong liquidation zone here in the shorter time frame. All the way up here around 70K. It's not crazy big. Underneath, obviously, it's a little bit bigger as you go farther down. But in the immediate zones, there's a lot to come grab up here too. So... I'm watching this very clearly. I'm watching it very closely to see exactly which way they're looking to go. Um, if you're looking to trade crypto, you can go in my video description below and or pin comments. If you go to my homepage, you can click on my Tom's Army emote. And then if you just click on BitUnix, you can see BitUnix and Hotcoin. BitUnix, I encourage you if you're going to leverage trade, you get lower fees and it's a little bit more transparent. I also, when we do our buying if we do drop down below where we're at and we end up going to that support zone we'll be buying algo iota iotx and a few others on bit unix xrp's there worldwide no vpn or kyc and then if you're interested in the future and you can follow it now but there's copy trading there i haven't made a single trade i'm waiting for the market to shake out and do what it's going to do and then i'm going to make an appropriate trade it'll be a 170 10x trade and it's going to do whatever going to do there's no stop loss but if you'd like to join it you're more than welcome to join the copy trading you have to click through the bit unix crypto exchange link right there and then after you've signed up get your money in order you can go to copy trading and follow xrp future million i think there's seven people following haven't made a trade like i said i'm not in the the leverage trading mindset at this exact moment but for the moment that i am i have the funds in there and then if you want to join me you can obviously do that Hotcoin, I encourage you as well. You can leverage trade there, spot trade, but they have um, XRP, Bitcoin pairing. They obviously have XRP, worldwide, no KYC or VPN as well. Um, and then they also have, which is important for me, Velo, SHX. Is Velo is down another 3.7%. And we're going to continue to, as I see it come down to the next support zone here, we're going to keep buying that $50 a week or $100 a week as it comes down. And then we'll make that grand purchase when it gets to the bottom. But I like the $50 a week. It's 200 bucks a month. You can start buying it as the position plays out. And then who knows? Sometimes you have your position built by the time it hits the bottom. If you want to send a donation, Cash App, Venmo, or PayPal, if you want to do it outside of YouTube. But I always encourage you, make sure to hit that like button before you leave so that YouTube will recommend this update. It'll allow me to push my content. And I do my content, and I've shifted my mindset as well to be more positive a loving nature because I simply cannot put up with or I'm, I'm so sick and tired of all the hate in the world. So I've switched my entire mindset to positivity over negativity. When we're in here, we're winners. We're not the victim. We never have been. We never will be. So being a winner, you have to have all the information from a news and charting perspective alike so we can make an educated and informed decision. We need the love to outshine the hate. It always does. But you also need the darkness to prove just how beautiful the light is. You cannot have light without the dark and you can't have the dark without the light. So it actually merges beautifully together, but the light the light and the love always win. So we're, we come from a place of love here and um, we do this from a positional standpoint of, hey, you know, we've got some stuff going on here, but we can maintain education and we can maintain and stay out in front of this. Even though we're looking at the up and down routes, every single day it's a different venture. This weekend was bearish. But now we have an opportunity to flip this bearish bias here. The fact Bitcoin stayed where it was at, stayed over that key support structure, 
And now if we can get over for XRP, if you see a surge over 5120 and start pushing up towards that 5270, once you're over 5120 area, you're looking a little better. Right now we've come right up to that rejection point. So we're going to see how this plays out. I'm XRP future millionaire. Pay attention to that rejection zone there for XRP and see if we can come back above. And make sure you pay attention that Bitcoin at all times is above 67,735. Otherwise, we're going to have to duck for cover. But right now, hopefully we can get a bullish bias. And when I come back for the live tonight, we'll be in a good mood. If not, we'll be looking for opportunity. Either way, we'll be in a good mood. Have a blessed day, everybody.